Hi and welcome back. From the last presentation of this multi-part, multi-threading presentations, you have learned what a thread is, how to create multiple threads in Java, and also the different stages in the life cycle of a thread, starting from new all the way to dead. From this presentation, you will learn how to prioritize threads, how to make a thread weight, and also what the join and yield methods on a thread do. When you invoke the sleep method, which is a static method on the thread class, by passing in the number of milliseconds that the thread should wait, the thread will be moved to a wait state from the running state. For example, let's say we are working on an application that has two threads, one to pull the current exchange rates, the currency exchange rates from a third party vendor, and another thread within our application will calculate uh, we'll do some complex calculation and display the result on the UI. So for the thread that pulls the currency exchange rate, since the currency exchange rates don't change often, instead of continuously pulling this information from the third party vendor, we can push this thread to a sleep state or a wait state by invoking the sleep method and by passing in 30 minutes as milliseconds. A thread when it finishes or when it comes out of the sleep state, that is, when the 30, 30 minutes or 30 seconds or whatever time you specify on the sleep completes, it will be moved to the runnable state, not to the running state directly. And then it's up to the thread scheduler again to move it to the running state. So it's not the exact time you specify, but the thread scheduler might take a few more seconds or a few more milliseconds to move the thread to the running state. It's up to the thread scheduler. But the time you specify is a minimum time that the thread will be put to wait. The JVM also allows us to set priorities on the threads, starting from 1 to 10, 1 being the lowest and 10 being the highest priority. And then the Java schedulers can move the threads from runnable state to the running state depending on the priorities we pass in. So if we have three threads with priorities 1, 5 and 10, the, the, the thread with the priority 10 will be moved to the running state first. And But this behavior is not guaranteed again. It's, it depends on the JVM implementations or the Java thread scheduler implementations that come with the JVM. They might completely ignore your priorities too. So our application should not completely depend on the thread scheduling algorithms or the thread priorities. We invoke the yield method on a thread to push the thread from current running state to a runnable state and to allow any other thread with the same level of priority to run. So when you invoke a yield method on a particular thread, it will push that thread to a runnable state and any other thread with the same priority will be moved to the running state. Again, there is no guarantee that the same thread will, uh, will be uh, pushed, uh, pulled, pushed back to the running state by the thread scheduler. It need not pick another thread with the same priority. It can push the same thread back onto the running state. And the thread dot join adds the current thread to the end of the thread on which the join method is invoked. That is, if we have two threads, let's say T1 and T2, and if T2 needs T1 to finish its job first, even before T2 can do anything, then we invoke T1.join so that T2 will wait until T1 completes its job. As an assignment, you should go and look at the Java docs for the overloaded version of a join method that takes a timeout value. To summarize, today you have learned how to use the sleep method to put a thread to wait or a sleep state for a certain number of milliseconds that you provide. When you put the thread to sleep and when the sleep method finishes, the thread is put back to the runnable stage and not the running stage and it's up to the thread scheduler when to move it, when to move the thread back to running stage. The yield method when invoked on a thread moves the current thread into the running stage so that another thread with the same priority can run. The join method on the other hand puts the current thread at the end of the thread on which the join is invoked so that 
the thread can wait until the other thread finishes its job which is required by the previous thread. In the next session, you will learn what deadlocks are and how to prevent them using synchronized block. Until then, keep sharing and learning. Thanks for watching.